All right, guys, I thought you'd like to see a quick little update on the uh, aquaculture system that we're working on here. Uh, the system now is right around uh, 1,100, 1,200 ish gallons. This tank here is a 6x2x2, by two, uh, by two, and it holds uh, a little right around 200 gallons. These each hold like 470 gallons. They're 6 foot round, 2 foot high tanks. And uh, you can see we've got some plants going. I'll talk a little bit about those as I walk up and show you. Just want to give you kind of an overall look at the system, though. Get the scale of it. This wood pile is about to go away, and more tanks will be added back here. We're thinking maybe four more of the six rounds. I've got some other ideas as well. And there's our rain catchment tank still waiting on us to get a gutter up on the uh, on the eave there. But again, that tank has absolutely nothing to do with uh, this system. A lot of people seem confused by that in the first video. Uh, it is only to provide us water for the system. It doesn't actually go in, it doesn't integrate to the system. Anyway, so uh, you see we're getting some algae growth. It's a bit green. The water's actually crystal clear if you put it in a glass. The algae's growing on the surfaces. That's actually a sweet potato cutting out of the garden. That big grassy thing over there is chufa. Uh, I pulled some chufa up out of the garden. And uh, these, these black containers all were planted with chufa. We're going to see how that does. I've read that it'll grow as an emergent aquatic plant. So we're just kind of play with that this year. Now the good thing is uh, chufa becomes invasive in some areas, especially in the south, and chufa gets really, really dirty, and there's these little tubers that you got to get out of it. Well, if it's all growing in gravel, and we'll see if that'll work, um, you know, when you're ready to harvest your chufa, you'll just pull it out, dunk it in water, it'll be clean. So we'll see if that works. We're trying to be a little bit creative with it. So just show how this works. Right now the trenches are open. We're going to be putting in some... Uh, running some power today that's going to go all the way down there so we got to cut a little ditch over where those bags of pea gravel are so we run our electrical conduit we'll have a outdoor rated box mounted there on that wall with a switch that can turn on and off uh, power that will be run down there and an outlet that's down there as well um, but right now the ditch is open so it's good so you can see everything that's uh, that's going on so you can see this is just basically a hose bib. It's plumbed with uh, three-quarter pipe. That pipe goes all the way down to that first tank. It brings water up here from the pump. A piece of three-quarter down there screwed into the bottom of that stock tank. comes up and over. And the height of this pipe right here sets the level of this tank right back here. If we want that higher, we could put a longer little piece of extension there. If I decide I want to hold a little less water back there, Right there, I'll hold about an inch less water uh, in the in the rear tank. So it's that simple. If I have too much flow, I can either increase or decrease my flow rate. Real simple with a hose bed. It couldn't be really more simple. Over here, this pipe sets the level of this tank. It's just a little piece of PVC with a bunch of holes drilled in it. Uh, I have a concern that leaves could clog it, so I have a plan to build basically a small box using 90 degrees. That way the holes on the inside will never clog up from leaves connecting from the outside. We'll have plenty of drainage there. That comes out there. Runs all the way down. And that pipe that comes out of the bottom of this, that tank up there actually goes into the bottom of that tank down there. It's the lower pipe. So because this pond's lower than that pond, um, the water just flows downhill. I mean, that, that's all there is to it. And then the pump recirculates it back up. And that hose bib right there, this is just to provide some oxygen. And you can see we threw a couple ornamental sweet potatoes down here. Some more pots of some chew, but there's some submerged aquatic plants there. Uh, there's uh, goldfish in the tank, but they're probably, there's a couple you can see right back there. And up in this tank here, we have some pond minnows. Those I can probably show you. I don't know if they'll show up on the camera, though, but there's uh, quite a few of them right in there. And they, uh, they like to cruise in and out of the, the pot. So uh, that's it so far. Again, we'll extend the system back that way. The next row of tanks will have to be at least as high as this tank, and we're probably going to do a little bit higher and let them drain down, so we'll create another, another uh, surface disturbance. And uh, we're thinking about doing that rather than conventional flush and drain aquaponics because we could take tanks all the way back to that another tree back there. I could put in a, another uh, 
instead of a two by six uh, circle tank, I could do a two by eight back there, and we'd push that whole system then up to about 3,500 gallons. The bigger a system like this is, the more stable it becomes. And uh, those of you that are uh, coming to the Urban Garden Workshop, there's the space we'll be designing. This is part of that space, and uh, you'll get to see the progress we've made by that time. We'll catch up with you with another video. Oh, real quick, Freedom Ranger chickens. These are three-week-old Freedom Rangers. Um, they are way more active than any Cornish cross I've ever seen. And we've got them in this uh, 16 by 16 area and we're able to just simply pick this whole thing up and drag it and move it you know 16 feet at a time whenever we're ready to move them and we do have to take all the water out and everything when we move it but it's not that big a deal and it's going to be 107 degrees today and these guys were panting yesterday so I went down to uh, Home Depot and bought a simple cheap 10 foot pre-assembled mister system for 12 bucks so we've got a line out here and uh I'm running in this fan for him when it gets really hot. All right, guys, again, I'll check up with another video for you guys later.